John, Chris, that was a, a great shot. Bit unusual, a artist uh, doing artwork and forming a business and actually taking the plunge. First of all, Chris, for yourself, yeah. it, people would say an artist is selling something that's based on an emotional sale. It's kind of not necessary. How important was that in your thinking when you went into this business? Because you came from picture framing, so it's very yeah. practical and real to something that's now very subjective, if I, if I could say that. Yeah, I, I suppose um, I did have the, the history behind me of doing my art, uh, where I knew that people were, were, were interested in it. I just had to actually put it out there. But um, I had all these other barriers mentally as far as saying, look, I, I, am I going to lose the passion for it and things like that. So they sort of held me back. When I started producing the work, I knew that someone would be interested in it. Um, uh, but as it progressed, it got better and better. And that was sort of, I suppose, the, the biggest surprise for me is that the work keeps improving at the moment um, quite substantially. We analyze this of both you for, for yourself, Chris and John, but when you're looking at something like art, it's very, very personal. You're actually giving yourself, people can actually virtually see you when they're looking at the yeah. art. How scary is that uh, from you, Chris, mm. from the point of view of actually putting yourself out there? And John, how do you help people overcome those emotions? Oh yeah, cool, yeah. Maybe um, Chris first. Yeah, well, I mean, um, Again, that's that's all part and parcel with that that fear of doing it full time, and will I be able to put on on the canvas or paper what I what I feel, and and still be able to make it uh, something that appeals to people and not lose that passion. So, um, so it all reverts back to that, and in in the case, um, it's it's done the opposite. It's 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 given me a lot of fire to to push on and that's been really, really well received by people who have seen my work. I yeah. think it shows in the work now. Yes, and it, yeah. it, it's gonna show in the work. I think the answer to the question, in Australia we have the um, kind of cliche or phrase, um, have a go. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so working with Chris, when he said to me, John, I need some help, all we've done is just had a go at a conversation You've had a go at painting. You've had a go at just letting people see your artwork. And then you've had a go at saying, well, it costs this much. And people have bought. Mm. And, and I think being willing to just test your own fears and test the fears in business, I think is just a great yeah. thing to do. Knowing that you're not, no longer doing it by yourself. And I think that was yeah. really powerful for you, Chris, is I'm no longer I'm doing it by myself. I'm making myself accountable and my coach is actually going to challenge me to step into what I've said I really want to do. Yeah. And yeah. you've just had a go and and we weren't under any time pressure or any financial pressure. No. We said if we could if we could do this over the next 12 months and we've exceeded that within 3 months. It just gives you great liberty and confidence. Uh, to continue it to all, pursue. It also changed the next, because now we have the next 12 months worked out. That's we've right. Had, yeah, that's <laughs> that. We've had that conversation as well about yeah. what will happen in the next 12 months. And that's been really exciting. And all we've done is simply understood this an opportunity and just had a go. So I would encourage people, if that's where you're at, get in contact with myself, get in contact with a coach and just have a go. Watch the impact it will actually have on you. John, working with an artist do you find it is uh different or is it or is this very much is it just a business is it just business as usual for you <laughs> yes or is there now going to be a change in your approach um I, i've always said this the widget doesn't matter and so i'm tested with an artist because it is very emotional like you were saying earlier that people buy in emotions and there's some of chris paintings that move me and others, it's like there's, you know, glazed over. You know, there's a, a, a dune that Chris has painted that is simply jumps off the page to me, and I'm thinking, it is just sensational. But it's just a, it's just a sand dune that I would walk over on the beach. But the way Chris has painted it really speaks to me. Mm. So um, there is that sense of I am passionate about helping business. 
I've said widgets don't matter. Um, so I'm challenged, can I deliver for this really interesting widget called art by applying business principles? And I've applied those principles and they're working and Chris is running um, really fast and doing really, really well because in a sense, all we've done is taken the genie out of the bottle, you know, the cork out of the bottle and wham, it's, it's really going well. There's something here, Chris, that strikes me, and you said about putting your art into galleries, and we were chatting off there before, and you're saying it has to go in the right gallery for the right stuff. Yes. And then you're doing your own art. Is this in your mind like a traditional bit, I'll use the word traditional business for lack of a better word, wholesaling and retailing? Are you wholesaling to galleries and then retailing yourself? And No, no, it's, it's, um, I'm treating myself as a gallery as well. So the, the product remains the same um, regardless of where it's bought through. So you could buy the product over in, over in Queensland and it'll still be the same. So I'm just uh, using myself. I feel like I, I have a lot to talk about with my art. So if people want to come down and see me, um, they can come see me or they can go to one of the galleries that, I, that, that represent me. So Yeah. John, when, yep. you, when you're coaching an artist, do you have a preferred method? Do you prefer it to be in like the gallery where Chris is in control and you can meet the artist personally? Or do you think there is room and both work together by in other galleries? What's your take? Um, for me, with any of my clients, I try to work with their, their best environment. And it just so happens, I go to Chris's gallery because he's looking after his son. Yep, join the day. His son's playing. We do our business conversation. It's a comfortable environment, and that's what I've always done with all of my clients is, where does it work best? Is it an office in the city that I have? Is it in a coffee shop? And I have coffee, cafes, caf coffees in cafes all over Perth, and I really enjoy that. Or it's in like Chris's home in his gallery, in his own home, and we work there. So my, it's not important to me, it's important for where my client is gonna feel the most comfortable. But it's, when it comes to selling the art, do you yes. prefer Chris to sell his art from his own gallery, or do you not okay. think there's any difference between the gallery that he owns and controls and outsourcing it to other foreign galleries? Okay, I think, okay. again, it's a widget. We have to work out where the widget's going to work to sell. So we have to understand that. So we, we've been doing trials. So the art trail was a trial and it worked. The, Chris has done a private showing. It's worked. The galleries are there. It works. So there's multiple ways in which your widget can actually get to the marketplace and often have just, have, like I said earlier, have a go, test, and so I'm, I'm just uh, started a new client yesterday. And so he, he has in his head, which is often happens in business, um, I get my client, my business from word of mouth and from newspaper adverts. I said, prove it. And so he's had a go and he's getting sales, but he actually doesn't know where he's getting sales. And so Chris knows where he's getting sales and we've started those principles right from the beginning and where many times in business, I'm helping them catch up. So um, I'm gonna having a conversation with his PA. This is the information I want, and she'll collect that, and she'll do some back research, and it really is powerful. Chris, you mentioned earlier in the show when you were talking with John, and you didn't put prices on your pieces on your first showing because some friends yep. were coming through. Every business owner, I think, struggles with this one. Mm. How do I get my pricing? Now, you're in a very subjective uh, yeah. mm. material world. How did you come up with your pricing? How comfortable had, are you with it? I had, I had been selling through galleries and that uh, for, for, for many years. Um, as I said, I always did it as a hobby. Um, and um, just obviously taking it serious and, and really focusing now. But I already had that pricing model to work from. So I knew it worked in a gallery. Um, I wanted to see if it worked um, when I talked to the customers and actually, and, and 
gather a little bit more personal service and, mm. and talking to people. So, and I think people really appreciate that. I mean, and, and in a lot of cases, um, when they go through a gallery, I don't actually get to talk to the customer or find out, you know, where it's going to hang. Um, in fact, it's uh, after this um, meeting, actually, your your favourite one, the gentleman. Mm. I'm going to see the gentleman that mm. purchased that painting. Um, and it, it's it's being able to have a bit closer relationship with your customer, so um, and explain the stories behind the paintings because a lot of them are really important to me. But you All of them you've are. worked through the that history of gradually testing yes. what the market will yeah. actually pay, and we've had the conversation about where to next, haven't yeah. we? And we've yeah. said no price increases till the end of the year. Yep. And we're going to review it in the new year because what we want Chris to do is we want Chris to continue to perfect his art. And so the art will be better and be a higher quality. Higher quality will demand a higher price. Mm. When you're in your world, Chris, and you've got, and you do framing as well, and then you yep. do your art, do you see the two businesses continuing as complementary? Or is your, now your focus to go become a full-time artist? At the moment, my focus just needs to be on doing the artwork. So um, I, I don't want to get become heavily involved in doing the frame. I love framing, but um, my focus really needs to be on in, improving my work. And we've had that conversation as well. Yeah. Should we do framing yeah. and we know how to set that up, all of those yeah, dynamics. We, we, it's it's yes. all there. Yeah. Um, it'd actually be financially viable, Yes. It's but it's not in my interest. That's it's right. not in my best interest it, it, for sure. It would be a distraction, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. And so you've got an outsourced company doing that for you? Yeah. Yeah. So we've resolved that question as well. But it's it, it could be into the future, mm. but right now it, 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 Chris is an artist who also runs marathons, which is really cool. I've even had um, a lot of interest in teaching. Yes. And I've had to put that aside as yes. well at the yes. moment. I'd love to do the teaching, but I can't do the teaching if I can't even do my own work. That's so right, yeah. I've, I've dedicated my time for at least the next six months to just focusing on my work. You said yes. something else interesting when you and John were talking. Obviously, you've been through this, and that was the fact of uh, how easy you found it to ship your art to interstate in Australia. Yeah. So you sell it Australia wide. Is there moves now to, and is it possible for you then to go international using similar models? And have you had that discussion? We haven't yet. Um, I mean, it's, I suppose it's just baby steps at the moment. Um, even as far as at the speed that I work, we worked out that it would take me six months to put together an exhibition and another six months to um, put together work that we have for promotional work out and around that people could also purchase. So um, for the next 12 months, we're, yeah. we're, it's pretty busy and, that, and that, would, that would only be in the area of about 30 or 40 paintings. That's right, yeah. So it's not, it's not terribly huge numbers. Mm. Um, it's so on a, on a national level, that's probably all I could manage at the moment. We had talked about prints and things like that, um, but I don't feel that the artwork's um, expensive enough that it, people really need to buy the prints. There are originals that are yes. available. Yeah. 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 Can I just ask you, and I am conscious of your time, guys, but can I just ask you, you you're talking about the, the, you're talking about the number of paintings. Yes. Have you had the discussion of, you know, scarcity makes your paintings more expensive? Maybe you had that discussion of let's not get too many out there or yeah. around that area? Yeah. Um, we have a little bit. Yeah. But bit. it's... Um, it's, it's more uh, from the point of view, if you look at other artists like Prohart and things like that, the number of paintings they produced in a year would be in the thousands. So um, it's, it's, it's kind of a case of... So you've got a bit of catching up to do, mate. <laughs> yeah, it, yes. it, you're, not, um, you're not going to fund the market with, no. with 40 paintings over, over the entirety of Australia. So, and I'm happy just doing those, those 40 paintings. I don't want to be you know every corner shop i i'm i'm quite happy being 
there, 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 there is a really right. narrow focus yeah. that we're working on very clearly yeah. into the marketplace, absolutely. So yeah. in a sense, there is a scarcity because time is the issue. You can only produce what you can produce in a period of time. And, um, you know, and it's gonna be de that's going to be demanding on Chris. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to make sure he stays true to the course. I think, I think for the next uh, six weeks, um, the sole focus is just doing a number of paintings, about three to go into a gallery down in Margaret River. I think we worked out mm. and there was maybe there was maybe about six galleries interested in mm. WA. So um, if we had if if each gallery is looking for a few pieces, you can't just have one. That's not a very good um, display of someone's work. So if you can imagine that you've got six galleries, then then some might sell one here and there. Mm. It, it's it's going to be very hard to actually fill that market mm. in, the, in the in the short term so yeah L last question you you're an artist and obviously you've had a picture frame before but yeah, we'll look yeah. at the artist point how does an artist build business skills so they can run it as a business it seems like you're doing this thing that's so emotional it's like this is what i love and then all of a sudden someone comes along like John and says, well, let's put some hardcore business structure into <laughs> I, this. <laughs> I think what, what also, yeah, I think what also helped is I did um, start investigating other artists. I had another artist, um, Julie Sylvester, who um, has, has known me since I was a kid. She's also a pastel artist. Um, and she was putting in front of me very obvious displays of, of how to do it. <laughs> And um, it was, uh, I knew how to, I could see her do it. And then it was like, the, the, I just needed the other little pieces to fall in place to, uh, as far as um, the confidence issues and stuff like that, uh, um, to, to then pursue it um, like we have. Yeah. So um, yeah, seeing, seeing a few other artists um, who had done it before was sort of, and, and even still there's, there's the Julie Sylvester, she's been a business owner. Um, she owned three businesses before becoming an artist. Mm. And I, I had the conversation with her. I said, I don't know how you do it. And she said, well, I've, I've run three businesses before. I applied what I learned from business to all of them, to my art. Yep. So, and it's working. So yeah. it's, there's not a conflict. It's actually enhancing yeah. what you do, yeah. which, is, yeah. which is what we want to see happen in any widget or any dynamic is it really does work but john you've taken in this up and this is an artist as and i'll phrase the same question to you very emotional very passionate there's love involved in this and then along comes john hardcore business this is how we'll do it has there been challenges to your models you know your coaching models and so the massage it a little bit to in to like get that emotion or does every business owner still have these same emotions? They have the same stuff. I just, I really do apply the uniqueness to each client and I'm really try to pay attention to who they are and make what needs to be happening for them, not just doing an A to Z. They are really important to me and I'm trying to figure out what is gonna be the best way forward for them. And so my conversation with Chris in the morning was very, very different from my conversation with Ryan in the afternoon. And, and that's what I do to help my clients. Fantastic. Chris, people want to see your art and maybe want to come to your gallery. What's the best way? Um, at the moment, um, we haven't uh, really set up, set up that yet, have we? Um, we're, we're sort of holding back a little bit uh, as far as setting up websites and things like that. Um, I'm on social media, um, just under my name, Chris Martin. Chris Martin on Facebook. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't really, we haven't really decided to push forward yet because the we've realised that the focus now needs to be on the artwork. Um, getting together that group of artwork, once we have that group of artwork, because what you can end up doing is over-promising over and saying, That's right. I have this artwork and That's that one right. artwork, and then all of a sudden you, you can't actually put together a show um, or a group or a body of work to show people. So yeah. at the moment, we're, we're just focusing on the artwork, and in the next six to 12 months, That's we right. should have something to get. And yeah. just Chris Martin, the artist, on Facebook. And John? 
John, of course. There, there yes. might be a few artists out there now. Yeah, going, yeah, I there will be. I didn't, know I, could, oh, I didn't know I could run this as a business. I, absolutely, How I'm do sure they there is. You for that chat? Uh, very easy through my website, peakconsultancy.com.au, or via email, John at peakconsultancy.com.au. Love to chat. It'd be great fun. And remember, the reason why we do this show is so you can do business better.